नमस्ते चेतना मैम नमस्ते हेलो व्यूअर्स इन दिस एपिसोड वी आर डिस्कसिंग बैंगलोर स्कूल्स सो चेतना मैम व्हाट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ स्कूल्स इन बैंगलोर व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट बोर्ड्स एंड हाउ इज द एजुकेशन सीन लाइक सो बैंगलोर आई फील इज ब्लेस्ड लाइक वी हैव सो मेनी ऑप्शंस हियर so schools in bangalore are not just uh, boards okay so of course you have the state boards you have uh, the government schools you have and then you have the state board the aided schools then you have your cbse schools your icsc schools you have igcsc schools you have ib schools you have uh, alternate schools you know the unschools unschooler methods where you don't have any board working Uh, you have all kinds of options and you have a beautiful homeschooling group also mm-hmm. uh, right like so many kinds of uh, options are available for seekers of uh, education here mm-hmm. uh, like i understand that this segment is more for children seeking schools so we will uh, focus on that but bangalore i think is is supremely blessed mm-hmm. but in, in all of these schools so there are cbse schools which are of different kinds because each one focuses on something special mm-hmm. uh, there are icsc schools of different kinds there are uh, igcsc schools of different uh, levels like you know expense wise facilities wise ib schools are also like that so we are uh, very blessed to be in bangalore actually mm-hmm. because the choice is amazing for us in terms of difficulty level which type of school whether it is state cbsc icsc ib the cambridge curriculum or igcsc and compared to orinco which one would you say is easy or difficult see the boards um just lay out the blueprint right for what you should be learning and uh, how you should be doing so if you look at board wise mm-hmm. uh you can say state board is easier Uh, but i wouldn't say it is because of the curriculum that is inside it that's not what easy or difficult is based on if you look at all the boards um it's the uh, cb uh, cbse curriculum actually our karnataka state board has aligned to the cbse curriculum mm-hmm. so obviously you know you you have a similarity there but still state board will be simpler because of the language that is used there the kind of books that are used there the kind of uh, test papers that are set so when you say a board is difficult or easy you have to think from many angles and not just preparation for an exam or getting marks right and then comes the cbsc cbsc has more focus on science and math because it is completely aligned with our entrance uh, you know examinations and all of that but it doesn't have so much focus on the humanities or commerce or all those aspects right so um, and the examinations are also based in in that way that uh it is easier to prepare based on past data and preparation based on rote and things like that if you look at icsc definitely it's a little more tougher because it has in depth focus as well as uh it focuses on art science all of these aspects uh, at the same time so that's why you have 10 subjects and you need to focus on each of them and each of them goes in depth and the exam papers are also set differently uh then you come to your ib ig csc uh which which are formulated itself differently the way they function is different uh the way they are expected to uh, work in classrooms is also very different and their examinations are also very application based uh, having analytical thinking and all these aspects so uh and then in orenco for example we have a blend we have icsc curriculum till till a certain grade then of course you can continue to do that but you also have nios board Uh, as uh, one of the options why do we use nios it's equivalent to cbsc but it has the flexibility of the igcsc mm-hmm. right and at orinco we truly believe that the board is just a blueprint it is the methodology that defines whether your child ends up with a certificate for life or a toolkit for life mm-hmm. along with that certificate right so uh, the whole thought process is very different Uh, at orinco when it comes to board but when you ask which is easy or different like i said you have to take it holistically uh, what's happening in the classroom uh, what is the methodology of the school because there can be an icsc school 
that is doing experiential education like like how orinko does um and the children are not having to rote memorize as much as another icse school must be doing which is completely a chalk and talk uh, based uh, school for example mm -hmm. uh, right so and then of course the board exams are board exams everybody is going to write the board exam but definitely you might be knowing that your your performance in the board exam depends on how much you have understood the content which makes it easier for you to memorize the content also and remember it and put it out in the examination in the format that is expected this also means that it is heavily dependent on your aptitude and on your abilities as a student because not all children are the same some of them can memorize without understanding and get very good marks some of them can understand and apply but not get that good marks in the exam but they'll do very well in life we have innumerable um you know uh, case studies like this right people who didn't do well in exams but did very well in life it's not just a matter of luck it's also because you had the attitude the aptitude <clears throat> for something like that uh, right so yeah i mean wish instead of comparing any board based on the difficulty levels i think you should compare the boards on why exactly are you choosing these boards what's the end result that you want to have or what is the journey that you want to have that is driving you to decide a board mm -hmm. so if a parent of a young child let's say 2 or 3 year old or maybe up to 5 years old wants to choose a school for them how will they choose a particular school or is it based on a board or what is the criteria for choosing first and foremost it is what you think of parenting of education of the future of education future of work um you know as and what are your thought process about it and how do you want to raise your child i think that comes first before anything else okay so if you are somebody that is understanding where the world is getting to that knowledge is getting outdated that you know you need to keep learning and growing and you don't know what the future looks like uh, but you do have indications that it's going to be um, full of technology and you need really a lot of design thinking skills to be able to pursue what you want in life and uh, do well in life Uh, and you're not going to study for just testing but you're going to study to be able to apply in life mm -hmm. and you need to have a set of skills that will enable you to mix and match and come up with other skills with which you can work in the world then your choice of school definitely is going to be something that's going to enable these isn't it because your child is going to spend maximum amount of their time in a school until they are 21 years at least isn't it mm -hmm. so but if you are um, more of a, a traditional parent who feels that uh, you know a school is for literacy and um, you know should we should go to a school for reading learning how to read write spell math and do the needful and uh, you know i can actually educate my child outside because then this school becomes literacy and you are educating the child outside which means that everything to do with their social skills your communication skills your cycle uh, your socio uh, emotional growth and uh, your hands on skills and everything else you're building outside then you don't need to think much about the school mm. isn't uh, that way if, if you're going to look at it then the school choice becomes totally different uh, and then you're going to think of the board right why are you going to think of the board because uh you might the child might be a us citizen for example right uh, or they or you know that you want your child to grow up and uh, go abroad and to study i but i still think if your child is between 3 and 5 years of age this is too early to decide that because india is evolving i know we say that indian education system has just been there and it hasn't been doing anything and we've been learning the same things and all of that but in the past in the past 2 3 years a lot of change has happened and with the nep we're going to have amazing amount of change and whatever we wanted in our education system is going to happen yes there are doubts about how they will happen because we are such a huge country um it is very futuristic in its thinking is it possible to do it or not i understand all of these things do we have the resources to do it because in orinco from 13 years we've been following exactly what the nep now prescribes right so i know what it takes to do it 
but it is doable if we all come together to enable it so if your child is between 3 and 5 years please don't even think of uh, whether you should go abroad or not because universities abroad are now coming to india mm. they want to set up here so you never know what's going to happen so if your child is between 3 and 5 think about your parenting skills uh, parenting styles think about uh, what do you think of education what do you want as education inside that school right and like i said you want a certificate at the end of it uh, you want the school to think of uh, 10th and 12th as destinations then you go to traditional schools mm -hmm. but if you want to understand that 10th 12th or whatever it is are just milestones in their life in that journey and you want the school to enable them from all uh, angles then you have to look at a different kind of schools mm -hmm. then come the board right indian boards are good enough then comes the next uh, uh, thing which is about your uh, the distance right nowadays i think we should stop thinking is the school nearby and put the child mm -hmm. we need to find the right fit and move for the school like for orinko we have children uh, parents and children flying from other countries to settle here other states to settle down in bangalore so that they can get orinko we have people from far away parts in Orin in in uh, the uh, city uh, moving towards where we are located so i think education has become very important uh, for some people so distance uh, think about it if uh, that is what is uh, uh, you know important for you then you have to look at the school philosophy itself uh, right the the principal how are they uh, what are their thought processes about education the teachers uh, what is their background uh, and how they have been evolving have they been progressive enough all of these things again the board doesn't feature here if you can see right then finally yes as of today's world cbse has lesser subjects lesser focus on uh, certain things which are not uh, like for example science and math is their main area of focus which is more beneficial after your sixth grade to write a board exam mm -hmm. so if your child is in that age maybe that's what you're going to look at um, right and uh, if your your focus is on in-depth knowledge your focus is on language acquisition itself like english is beautifully done in uh, in ICSC, for example, then you go for an ICSC board. But if your child is going to go, uh, you feel that he needs a global curriculum and that is possible only in an IGCSE or IB school where the children from all nationalities that are coming and learning and the curriculum also spans across different uh, aspects of uh, in the world. For example, history, world history is done very differently in IGCSE. Then look at that aspect. And then understand at the 10th grade level what is happening, right? 10th or 12th grade level. In CBSE, like I said, it's science math focused. In ICSE, I said it is in-depth focused, but a lot of subjects, a lot of work to do. In IC, IGCSE, you have um, a lot of freedom, just like NIS. So I, NIS and IGCSE, I find, are so similar in the, in the flexibility and in the uh, student-led uh, you know methods that they have it's very nice that you can take any subjects and they have so many subjects that you can choose out of and uh, it's beautifully done so maybe then you want to do something like that IB definitely is a passport to foreign universities because they recognize IB better it's not that the other uh, other boards do not get admissions abroad they do get Many children have gone from all kinds of boards but yes IB and IGCSE are recognized more because they are there are schools across the world. So there are many factors in choosing a school. That's what I'm trying to say. And the board is just one small aspect. In fact, if you ask me in today's time, do not even ask for the board. Visit the school. Spend time over there. Spend time with the people who run the school. Spend time with the people who fund the school. Right? Spend time with the within the classroom. Spend time with the parents of that school. Ask the children, how do you feel? What do you learn? How do you learn differently? See how they're speaking. See if uh, the children are fearful or are they open, right? If, they, if What do you feel when you walk into the school? Do you feel stress? Do you feel happiness? Do you feel, uh, you know, collaboration? What do you sense there, right? Mm -hmm. Speak to the marketing team. You'll understand if they're selling too hard, then there is something that you need to think of. If they're selling too less, then also there is something to think of, mm -hmm. uh, right? See how you're treated by the management, by everybody. Is that okay for you? Is that because you have to be part of the child's journey, right? In Orinco, we call it the co-parenting. You are involved in everything in the school. Every policy, everything you 
you would be involved in and you know why that is there and you are you are free to build them with us is that what you want or that's too overwhelming for you right so look at all these aspects and then of course the board because the board like i said is a blueprint and we can design our experience in school depending on our methodology and philosophy so you mentioned about visiting the school and experiencing for oneself the culture of the school but what if some parents are abroad and they are not able to visit before they make a school admission and i recently came across somebody who told me that you know cbsc is for students who want to do undergraduate in india and ib is for students who want to do undergraduate studies abroad is that true and if without visiting the school how does one decide whether the school the cbsc or ib board i have to choose or not choose okay so how do you visit the school yes it can be difficult because not schools all schools are open for that uh, in orinco we have a one week immersion for children who can visit so what do the other children do is always a question that who are now abroad so uh, one way to do it is uh, definitely to look at various uh, videos and pictures they put on their facebook and various places you kind of get a feel of the place uh then you talk to the parents uh we have excellent uh, facebook groups and all in our city for uh, prospective parents to come and uh, get uh, review of schools mm -hmm. so check with them how they feel uh be very careful of whom you are speaking to and what information you are getting out of them because you might have to speak to a lot of people see some people are so traditional in their mind that if they are treated with uh, a certain sense of fear uh they're okay with it and they feel that children should go through some amount of stress and should be raised with fear so that they're able to respect uh and uh, study hard for example so obviously that person is going to like a school that is like that uh, but there might be some who are just aghast at this like you know how can we ill treat children uh and that ill treat for them might just mean not allowing the child to ask questions in class for example that that may be just unacceptable to you for example right so you might want to speak to many parents to kind of get a hold over this um and then of course go go through the google reviews you'll get some information um and, and so on right so you'll have to rely on these kind of things um next your question on cbsc igcse actually just take all the boards okay uh if you want to remain in india as of today i'm saying not for a 3 to 6 year old as of today if you are above 6th grade and you want to study in india then any of these boards are okay except that igcse and ib your mindset is different you become a thinker right you kind of look more at application and you focus less on rote memory the way your brain functions about education is very different that is true even in orico we don't have ibigcse but we raise our children to be you know inquirers we want them to ask questions we want them to ask where can i apply this we want them to use their hands and actually apply this so for all of our schools when they go into this rote memorization kind of uh, world for entrance exams and coaching and then go into a typical undergraduate programs which are still based on rote then there might be a disconnect for orinco the disconnect is not there because we use the indian curriculum as well so we just directly are able to catch up for a child with ib igcsc they might need some amount of change of mindset second is they might have to balance between their kind of curriculum including our indian kind of curriculum where the entrances are very numbers based right you have to do this many questions you have to repeat it in this much time and then you have to get through so obviously you know there's a there's a shift in mindset so many children actually complete 11th and 12th uh, in ib igcse take a break year gap year prepare for our entrances and then go into our undergraduate in india mm -hmm. right or in co children we have integrated right from 9th grade we have integrated career focus programs so obviously for them this integration time is uh, not really required and it's a seamless transition into the colleges mm -hmm. um but the other way around like if you have to go abroad do you have to do ibg igcsc uh it's not you have to do but if you do then uh, your transition into their kind of curriculum or their kind of mindset is easier for this child mm -hmm. 
right? Uh, but can a child with CBSE, ICSE state not do it? Of course not. They can do it, uh, right? It takes some time mm -hmm. to transition into it. So, and there have been so many kids doing that. We never had IB, IGCSE like maybe 10, 12 years back or 15 mm -hmm. years back, right? But children have been doing it. And even today, so many are passing and going. Yes, they do have transition trouble right in the beginning, but they are fine with it. They understand. And then they start appreciating the other form of education as well. So, uh, you know, our association of universities has granted equivalency to state boards, to CBSC boards, to IC, ICSC boards, and to NIS board. That means all of these boards are equivalent. Mm -hmm. And to be equivalent, you have to all pass through certain uh, uh, standards and you have passed through those standards. So that's why there is no question of any of our children uh, being uh, good or bad or better than any other boards. Mm -hmm. uh, it does depend on how the school has raised you mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of exposure you had and what kind of experience you had. Mm -hmm. And there is a definite advantage if you have IG, IB, IGCSC uh, to go abroad perhaps. But uh, schools like Orinco, which don't have IB, IGCSC, but use the same methodology of learning, also have the same advantage. Mm -hmm. So all of these boards are similar so don't go by the boards. There can be a CBSC child who, who is as good as an IGCSC student because of the way the school has taught him. Mm -hmm. And uh, there can be an IGCSC child who's not even as good as an ICSC child because the school did not focus on certain core concepts of what is required in that particular subject, for example. So it is nothing to do with the boards. It is also to do with how we have uh, raised the children and how we have uh, tutored them and what we have focused on as a school. Ma'am, what is international school? What does it mean? Uh, in our country, we are giving that name left, right and center everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you are a truly international school, like not international word in your name only, uh, then uh, you're having one of these international uh, boards. Mm -hmm. That was how it started, actually. You have IB or IGCSE boards, and that's why you're an international school. Mm -hmm. uh, but that itself should not mean an international school, in my view, because uh, it, the board is the board that's here, and you're teaching in that way, and you're having an international or a world perspective when you're teaching, which is good. But I think uh, truly international schools have like 30, 40, 50 nationalities that are studying there uh, because there, there are children in other countries for whom India is a cheaper option mm -hmm. uh, or a more uh, viable option in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the country being close by or whatever. There are many reasons. India is also relatively safe, safer than other countries. Uh, so that's why you might have. So that is like, a melting pot, right? Like you have so many nationalities, your canteen will have so many kinds of food, your your conversations will be so different. Then I think you, it's it's more of an international school. And in terms of expenses, how do these boards or different types of schools compare? So uh, all the boards, again, they have levels in each one of them and that's how they are priced. Okay, so you have state board schools which are free, you know, government schools are free. But you also have state board schools which have 500 rupees fees per month to 2,000 rupees fees per month to 5,000 rupees fees per month. Because it depends on what the school has to offer. Maybe somebody doesn't have a ground at all, but somebody has ground, somebody has STEM, some STEM education, somebody has art, dance, craft. So it totally depends on what the school is offering because the fee is not towards the board. The fee is towards the school and what the school has to offer uh, but in terms of just the board related expenses and that's why that uh, those expenses uh, kind of percolating down into the children's fees then you can see that uh, IGCSC and IB schools will be the most expensive because the expenses that the school has to make towards teacher training towards affiliation towards that board uh, towards uh, just retaining that affiliation all of those are uh, a huge amount and that's why your fees of your school also might differ but uh, just like I mentioned before there can be ICSC school fee that is equivalent to an IGCSC school fee and that may be because of the features that it offers like in case of Orinco for example our fee uh, is um, uh, like the base level of IGCSE schools 
though a lot of parents have told us that we should be charging much higher because of the facilities that we give but our uh, fee is there why is our fee there because we have a 1 is to 5 ratio in preschool we have a 1 is to 8 ratio in our uh, uh, schools um, in our primary and uh, 1 is to 12 in our higher grades so that itself is an expense um, then we have uh, many many uh, activities that the child does uh, which is uh, your um, uh, you know, your carpentry workshops, electronics workshop, electrical workshop, there's so many kinds of things that we do, theater, dance, so many things. So that's why also our fee is comparable to that. So that's one of the examples that I was trying to give you, that we might not be IBIG, CSC, but our fee might be uh, somewhere uh, closer to that range than uh, compared to a state board or a normal CBSC school. So it totally depends on uh, the number of children, the kind of expenses you have to make for teacher training and various uh, aspects. If a child who has studied in any of these boards wants to pursue competitive exams like maybe JEE or NEET or even UPSC, then how does the particular board or school uh, schooling help? Um. So our uh, entrance exams in our country are based on the NCRT curriculum. So CBSC is the closest, uh, right? So obviously, if you're in the CBSC board, you can do these exams better. Uh, this is only if your child is above sixth grade right now, sixth, seventh grade right now. Uh, if younger, then wait for the NEP to roll out properly because they're thinking of a national testing agency the committee is trying to come up with a one common uh, examination for everybody. All of these things are happening. So uh, just make sure that, uh, you know, your age group you keep in mind. Uh, but can an ICSC student do the um, exam, the competent, competition, uh, competitive exams better? Definitely, yes. They are also learning the core concepts, but they're learning a lot more than that. So obviously they have more world knowledge, right, uh, than CBSE because like I said, CBSE does not focus on uh, other than math science, their focus on other subjects is very less. Uh, can a child with the IB, IGCSE do our competitive exams? Yes, they also have the core knowledge. But like I said, the thought process, the mindset with which they approach learning is very different. It's for application based and rote memory is not part of the ball game there at all. So maybe that's why, um, you know, they have to actually switch between entrance preparations and uh, their their board preparations. Mm -hmm. So that switch of mind is required or take a gap year and prepare and do. Uh, a school like Orinco is in between both of these. Uh, and you have progressive schools in India right now, right? So in Bangalore also right now. So obviously you're getting the core knowledge. Uh, you're getting the outside knowledge that's required for your life. Uh, with the career focus programs that we have, we are also having the career toolkits for almost 10 streams like law, hospitality, medicine, engineering, whichever you would choose in your 11th and 12th, uh, plus you have the entrance preparation. So all of them together would come, uh, would be easier for you to appear for a board exam. Ma'am, if a student has failed some subjects, then which board allows or what is the procedure, is it whether it is easy or tough to retake exams? Um, if you remember our uh, state and CBSC, ICSC, they have supplementary exams. Mm -hmm. And I think we can take that that year, uh, immediately after the results are uh, announced. Um, and then depending on whether you pass it or no, your your college starts a bit late. Uh, but um, NIOS, I feel, is the best in all of these because you can uh, write the exams uh, almost nine times uh, and there are on-demand exams so you can definitely clear that exam because people fail exams not because uh, they're not good at it or they didn't prepare for it they also uh, you know fail exams because there can be ill health uh, there can be anxiety during the exam suddenly there can be many reasons why children uh, you know don't do well at exams and exams are not the only way of testing them any which ways so i think nis uh, understands this very well so that i really like uh, IB, IGCSC also they have their supplementary exams and you can take those exams and you can clear them. Um, preferable is to see that you don't get to that point. Uh, and that's why, like I said, the school is 
something that is very important over here you know if a school is able to identify that a child needs extra help a child is getting anxious during exams a child is uh, not able to prepare by themselves and they have a coach a personal mentor for the child and all they should be able to do well so that's why again and again i'm coming back to the school uh, methodology the philosophy um, the teacher child ratio uh, the uh, emphasis on uh, real world skills the emphasis on life uh, and how children are raised for that life and not just exams that's very very important if a child is born abroad and is the citizen of that country versus a citizen of india how do these boards compare are there any advantage or disadvantages for a particular citizenship if your child is born abroad and you're you're coming here for education i think schools might have some nra quota for uh, paying fees or something like that but otherwise there is no difference children who are transitioning from other countries and other boards might file find the um the rigidity of certain schools very difficult to handle because abroad you are given a lot of freedom openness you are able to actually uh, ask questions and uh, pursue a project based kind of learning so some schools the child might find it very difficult to transition into i think instead of thinking uh is uh, is it is is the school uh, fit we have to see school and child fit more than anything else um and languages you may not have learned hindi kannada for example in bangalore kannada is uh, in karnataka kannada is compulsory so maybe those kind of things and hence it's important for you to see a transition uh, which is uh, uh, less difficult for the child it's a misnomer to think that if you are in an international school there then an international school here only makes sense mm-hmm. to think that you know ib igcs in india only will make a better transition it's not like that Mm-hmm. um you might find like we have so many children coming in toronto from other countries right uh it's a smaller space it's easier for children to transition the teachers give a lot of care and attention maybe that's what your child needs uh and as a family i have seen that uh, indians abroad give a lot of value to your culture and uh, you know the indian culture and all of these things which uh, might find a place in the indian kind of schools for example right so you might want to consider traditional schools um or schools that believe in indian traditions and are raised in the indian context because obviously indian curriculum icsc cbsc um state are indian examples and indian things so you might actually want that but uh, the environment of the school i think makes more um uh, takes more importance in this transition than anything else so if your child is born abroad and you're transitioning into the country two things to keep in mind how long are you transitioning is it for a short duration then maybe yes come get into an international school and go away uh, but there are many children who have come who have uh, adjusted into indian schools just for the flair of it because that is a learning of a different kind altogether and then you go back right if you come here for good then obviously if you're going to be here till your undergraduate at least uh then you will you can easily go for indian uh, boards and if you are going to uh, go abroad and you have specific universities in mind and you're very particular that you need to have ib only then go for ib schools it's not really what i'm trying to say is you can have your own choice of boards but nothing is mandatory and everything is possible nothing is good or bad or uh, difficult or easy or whatever it is everything is possible it again depends on what your thought process is is about education about what what a child will be doing how much freedom you want to give him what you consider as exam experience because for somebody a very traditional school with strict values might also be an experience they want to consider and for somebody i don't want my child to go through any trouble at all might also be an experience they want to consider for some people there's a culture shock when you come to international schools here because over there it was just a school but then outside you were like totally indian in your mindset but over here international schools might be totally westernized in their mindset and maybe that's not okay for you as a parent uh, that's mm-hmm. not what you were looking for perhaps but there's nothing wrong in both of these aspects mm-hmm. everything is an experience in life so you have to really consider as a unit as a family as a child as parents what are you looking for 
and then that's why i was mentioning that knowing about the school looking at the activities they they do understanding the parent crowd understanding what kind of community you're getting into all of that is much more important than just the board charts and i and i see people asking for schools they and the one question that everybody asks is i want i'm looking for this board i'm looking for that board which board and i'm always thinking how does it matter because you should be saying that you know as a family i want so and so for my child and which is the school fitting into this or as a child my child needs this kind of an environment and which is the school fitting into it i wish that you know our school searches become more like this because then it's a perfect fit what about co curricular or extra curricular activities are these decided by the board or by the school and what should a parent look for when they are searching for a new school no the board really doesn't decide it but every board wants children to be raised holistically so obviously there is a requirement that there is physical education and and some things like that but uh, with the nep now there is an emphasis on uh, say uh, coding courses after 6th grade artificial intelligence there are so many options that are being given um, that should be there in schools uh, vocational aspect should be there and so on so so obviously these are going to be- become important for schools to have um but yeah but it's not that if you have so and so board you're going to get so and so things in bangalore uh, people do understand education uh, educationists have set up beautiful schools with many different things some school might have horse riding some school might have archery some schools might have uh, shlokas some school might have something else it totally again depends on the uh, thought process the the philosophy and the methodology of the school so orinco is more um indian in its con- context we are global in our mindset but i think in our context we are very indian we sit on the floor we don't wear footwear we say prayers uh before every it may not be religious prayers but it is a prayer to the universe to maybe give us enough focus and concentration because for children sometimes externally we have to work on certain things so when they are actually closing their eyes and saying a few words to themselves to focus to concentrate it, it in it in itself becomes a prayer so maybe for us that is important we have natya which is like a combination of indian mythology singing dancing and all of those things but we also have theater we have a excellent makers lab uh, because we are science technology and uh, engineering design focused uh, so we have that so we are a mixture of everything but we still i feel are entrenched in the indian context does it mean that children can't adjust abroad definitely they can because inside them the value system is intact their roots are strong with their country they can go fly out as much but they can always come back to their country right so for someone this, for whom this is important maybe this is a transition so every school is different every school has various things you will have to figure out what do you want so there are parents uh who uh, like in orinco for example uh, sports is not competitive but it is explorative and it is something that you need to build as a habit where it will build your stamina your uh, and it is part of your recreation in life so obviously there's no competitive sports but somebody who comes to orinco and takes admission for that parent sports in school is not mandatory because most of our children follow sports as uh, a passion outside and we have state level players and we have so many different children doing excelling in sports but that's not what we are doing in school and for a parent that might be totally fine because i'm here for exploration right and i want to use orinco for that reason because it allows my child to be able to play without really being the best in in on the team but for some other parent going to another school where there is a state team playing basketball is very important because that's where the child is or wants to be so it totally depends on what you want for yourself mm-hmm. and your child i remember that one of my teachers used to say that when our parents were studying they were studying in government schools and when i was studying high school i studied in a aided school and then there were private schools and now there is international so he was saying i don't know where this is going to lead to what what is next 
and seeing that you know elon musk has taught himself rocket science and google has come up with certificates which have equal value as a university degree and they google themselves gives jobs to such certificate holders and even in india we have zoho schools which is doing similar work they have their own uh, courses and after 10th or 12th students can join and then they are paid to they are given stipend while they learn on the job and a paper credential is not really required so maybe we are coming a full circle back to where it all started yes so what yes. and that's why it's all the more important mm -hmm. that we don't look at schools for literacy anymore mm -hmm. schools have a totally different uh, position in our in our world as of today mm -hmm. what would be your thoughts on what's coming next where is uh, school education leading to school education is leading to where it should lead to which is completely student led student centric right uh, and that's why we are in love with the nios board because you can choose any subjects you can choose your pace you can choose when you want to appear for exams you can decide which exam you want to write on which day uh you can choose any number of subjects right and you can write your uh you can learn those subjects that you can learn subjects without even writing the board exam in that because you know it's all available there mm -hmm. and education is is going to be that liberalized where you have courses and you can pick and choose and you can learn from there and hence what will happen to schools then right schools will become that place where children are taught or at not taught also i think facilitated to become human beings to be able to interact with different students to come up with projects learn how to work collaboratively and to apply the learning that they learn so flipped classrooms is going is the way and is going to be the way right you are learning various things you're bringing it back to the table as a group you're working on something that knowledge comes in you share that knowledge and then you take it further so and, and i'm glad that orinco has been doing that yes we do have some amount of teaching that's still required because we try we have tried online we know that it works we have done a good job there also but still there is a great joy in sitting in a class and learning with everybody and that's why we have the co-constructivist approach no teacher just comes and tells you what you should be doing or what you will be learning the lesson never starts with a textbook right you are actually taking a topic oh how do you think the plants are green and then you have so much information coming because our children are learning outside right they are looking at videos they're learning so many things so many view points come in then you mix that all up and then you have your own learning come out of it then you open a book just for the joy of it and say oh you know what we just said this this is why it is like this that is why it is like that so i think schools are going to be more important this way and also parents nowadays don't have the time because their careers are taking a totally different turn also along with how education is going in in a different uh, uh, you know path altogether right and i think for parents schools are going to be these places which are going to teach children how to live life skills you know in orinco we teach how to spread out the napkin how to open your lunch box how to open the food how to take the chapati with the bhaji and then to eat these are also skills right how do you how do you actually work with a child if there's first aid then you have to know what to do right even at a great too you should know how to deal with that so i feel all of these uh, combined with all the opportunities that you can create as a school i can call every day one guest from outside as a school we can do so many activities together right so many organizations work with orinco because they love just being there and working with their children to give skills so i think that's what a school should be because the rest of it which is a reading writing spelling math the literacy is not a big deal for this generation at all it will come and even if it doesn't there's a lot of assistive technology out there which will take care of it so it's time we start thinking why do i want a school how do i want to raise my child right what is the output that i'm expecting is it a 12 year engagement is it a lifelong engagement mm -hmm. and that is important when you're looking for a school and the board yeah it's there the question the search for a school should never begin with the board thank you for your time ma'am and thank you for running such an amazing school where children are encouraged to continue asking questions for example my son's never ending questions keep going on and on and just today he was saying that if a drop of water falls on my hand it stays as a blob but if it falls on my sweater then it spreads everywhere why is that i told him it's a yeah it's a great question you can continue thinking 
and if you continue thinking on a topic that answer will come to you don't just ask somebody and get their answer think and find out your answer and that's why a parent like you will love the co constructivism in or mm-hmm. because the teacher is also going to give you five different questions back when you ask a question mm-hmm. no one is going to give you the answers and maybe for you that's okay but for somebody it would be overwhelming that my poor child asked a question and you didn't even have the patience to give him the answer mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and so then that then this is not the right place perhaps uh, for you but there is always another place and that's why i said right in the beginning bangalore is one of the best places because you have all kinds of schools available here with all kinds of philosophies all kinds of methodologies and all kinds of boards and so there is one school available for each one of us mm-hmm. thank you for this amazing session it was really it brought, it brought brought a lot of much needed clarity thank you ma'am thank you thank, so much thank you viewers thank you for watching If you have any questions please leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel to encourage more such content. Thank you.